How many of you are familiar with the name Jeff Bezos? Okay, how about Amazon.com? Have you heard of that? Well, Amazon.com is the world's first and largest internet bookstore. And Jeff Bezos is the man who started Amazon.com back in 1995. Five years later, Amazon.com was serving millions of customers in 120 different countries. Amazing, right? And this is the reason why, in 1999, Jeff Bezos was selected as Time Magazine's Person of the Year. A very great honor. Now, Jeff Bezos is actually not the topic of my lecture today, but he is a perfect example of my topic, which is entrepreneurs. That's entrepreneurs. Let me spell it for you. E N T R E P. R-E-N-E-U-R-S. It's a French word which means a person who starts a completely new business or industry, or someone who does something that no one else has done before, like Jeff Bezos, who started the very first internet bookstore. Entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos are very highly respected in American society and, I think, in many other countries too. So, in today's lecture I want to talk about three things. First, the characteristics of entrepreneurs, I mean, what kind of people they are. Second, the kind of background they come from. And third, the entrepreneurial process, that is, the steps entrepreneurs follow when they create a new business. Okay, let's begin by looking at the characteristics or the qualities of entrepreneurs. There are two qualities that I think all entrepreneurs have in common. First, entrepreneurs have vision. I mean that they have the ability to see opportunities that other people simply do not see. Let's look again at the example of Jeff Bezos. One day in 1994, he was surfing the internet when suddenly he had a brilliant idea. Why not use the internet to sell products? Remember, at that time, no one was using the internet in that way. After doing some research, Bezos decided that the product he wanted to sell was books. That's how Amazon.com got its start. The other quality that I think all entrepreneurs have is that they are not afraid to take risks. I mean they're not afraid to fail. As an example, let me tell you about Frederick Smith, who founded Federal Express, the company that delivers packages anywhere in the United States overnight. Smith first suggested the idea for his company in a college term paper. Do you know what grade he got on it? A C. But this didn't stop him, and today his company is worth more than $2 billion and employs more than 25,000 people. Okay, we've just seen that all entrepreneurs have at least two important qualities in common. But now let's take a look at their backgrounds, and here we'll find lots of differences. First of all, some entrepreneurs are well-educated like Jeff Bezos, who graduated from Princeton University. But others, like Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft Corporation, never even finished college. Next, some entrepreneurs come from rich families, like Fred Smith, the founder of Federal Express. In contrast, other entrepreneurs come from poor families. You may be interested to know, in addition, that many entrepreneurs are immigrants or the children of immigrants. A great example is Andrew Grove, the former chairman of the Intel Computer Company, who was born in Hungary and came to America as a refugee after World War II. His family was very poor. Okay, the third difference is that although many entrepreneurs start their careers at a young age, Lots of others don't get their start until age 40 or later. And finally, I think it's important to remind you that entrepreneurs are not always men. A famous woman entrepreneur, for example, is Debbie Fields, who founded the Mrs. Fields Cookie Company. 
you can find her shops in malls all over North America and Asia. According to a study which was done in 2012, there were 40 million entrepreneurs active in Europe, of whom 29% were women. Yes, 29%. This shows that although their number is not high, we have female entrepreneurs as well. According to the same study, the percentages of women entrepreneurs of the total entrepreneurs varied considerably between countries. With 43%, Liechtenstein had the highest percentage of women entrepreneurs, followed by Latvia, 40%, and Luxembourg, 39%. So, the countries in which the number of female entrepreneurs is high are Liechtenstein, Latvia, and Luxembourg. Let me share something interesting with you. With 15%, Turkey had the lowest percentage. So, to conclude this section, you can see that entrepreneurs come from many different backgrounds. I want to move on now and take a look at the entrepreneurial process. There are six basic steps that most entrepreneurs follow when they start their business. In the first step, they identify a problem. In other words, they see a need or a problem that no one else sees. Then, in the second step, they think of a solution. What needs to be done to solve the problem or meet the need? I think we've already seen several examples today of people who saw a need or an opportunity and then came up with a creative solution to the problem. Step three is to prepare a business plan. In my opinion, this is the most challenging step. A business plan means looking at things like equipment, location, financing, marketing, and so on. There are thousands of details to think about when you start a new business. As a result, this stage can take months or even years. That is why I think it is the most difficult step. The next step, the fourth step, is putting together an entrepreneurial team. In other words, hiring the right people to work with the entrepreneur in the new business. After that, the fifth step is something called test marketing. That's test marketing. This involves making and selling a small amount of the product or service. And if customers like the product or service, then, finally, entrepreneurs go to the sixth step, which is raising capital. Now, in this case, capital does not mean a city. It means money. It's another word for money. The entrepreneur has to raise a lot of money in order to produce and sell the product or service in large quantities. I want to say, in conclusion, that entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos are among the most respected people. They are cultural heroes like movie stars or sports heroes. Why? Because, starting with a dream and working very hard, these people created companies that solved serious, important problems. They provided jobs for millions of people, and in general, their companies made life easier and more pleasant for all of us. If you ever order a book from Amazon.com or eat a Mrs. Fields cookie, say thanks to the remarkable people who created these companies.